Hey guys, one of my absolute favorite third-party HomeKit apps, Controller for HomeKit, has just released a huge update. Meet Controller 7.0. The app that brings us HomeKit users so many great features, including advanced automation capabilities, backup and restore options, a way to store your setup code, smart folders, and so much more, now brings us a super impressive floor plan feature. That's right, with this feature, you can easily scan your house using LiDAR to generate a 3D model of your home. Then you can add buttons to control your smart home devices, sensor displays, scenes, and so much more. We're gonna cover everything new you can expect with this huge update. And if you've not yet used the controller for HomeKit app, maybe this video will help you decide if it would be a good addition to your smart home. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane and this channel is all about helping you build an easy Apple home smart home with new videos and live streams published every week. So if you've been following me for a while, you may know that I am a big fan of using certain third party HomeKit apps to help extend the functionality of HomeKit. While I do love HomeKit, the Apple Home app can be a bit limiting. <laughs> so adding apps like Controller for HomeKit to your toolbox can be really beneficial. Today's video is sponsored by Controller for HomeKit. Now, as someone who's used this app for years, I was super excited when the developers reached out and asked if I wanted to try these new features early and then share them with you. I have talked about this app before here on the channel a number of times. In fact, it really is one of the most capable third-party HomeKit apps out there. But today we're here to talk about the new Controller 7 update. It is a big update, probably the biggest biggest one yet, and the big new feature is this floor plan feature. There are some other updates we'll discuss, but let's just go ahead and jump right into the new floor plan feature because it is certainly the most exciting, I think. Users with a LiDAR enabled device can easily scan your house to auto generate a 3D model of your home. Basically, every iPad Pro and iPhone Pro since the iPhone 12 Pro model supports LiDAR. Now, if you don't have a LiDAR enabled device, you can actually conduct the same scan using a friend or family member's device, export the floor plan, then import that floor plan to your own device. The app is using an app clip for this that can be used to conduct the scan. I think that's really nice, a nice little touch, great attention to detail by the developers of the controller app. I think it was a very creative way to make it so that you are not limited by the capabilities of your device in order to take advantage of this feature. One thing to note is that the app does only use local data for this, meaning that all the data, including camera footage, is processed securely on your device using Apple's room plan framework. Furthermore, your 3D models are encrypted so they can be securely transferred across your Apple devices via iCloud. Now I'm gonna actually show you on my iPad so it'll just be a little bit easier to see in this video here. If I long press on the floor plan section, I can tap manage floor plans. I already have one, that was the first one that I set up using my iPhone, but I wanna add another one. So I'll tap start scan and begin scanning the room. Now you can work through your house or your room, you know, you can add additional rooms and all that stuff. I'll just be doing my studio here. Once done with the room, you can see our 3D model. Just really, really amazing, this technology, I think. You can continue scanning other rooms or save your floor plan. I'll tap save. Then you have an option to adjust the thumbnail that will be used and boom, it's all done that easy. Just isn't, This is just crazy, I think. It even recognizes all the furniture, like the chairs, my computer desk, and the couch that's back there. Just super impressive, I love this. Now, let's start adding elements to our floor plan. All right, so here are our options. Let's look at each. In the room, you can add, you know, basically any room icon to your floor plan. I'll tap studio because this is the studio and then I'll place it here in the room. I might want to change that icon. Let's go with more of an office type of icon. Let's go with that. Select. 
Save, all right. Next, let's look at the accessory. We can add any accessory, so this as you would expect, any of your Apple Home accessories. You can add here, let's go ahead and just add a couple to kind of show you for demonstrations. Let's add lines two. That is actually those Nanoleaf lines back there. So I'm gonna put those right here behind the couch. Let's add another accessory. Let's go, let's see here. Let's just go with the studio closet light. We'll put that right over here. This is where my closet is, okay? You can already kind of see the difference when the light's on versus off. You kind of get the, uh, you know, the color indication there. Next, we can add scenes also here. So scenes is kind of like a way to control multiple accessories all at once. Uh, and these are, you know, scenes that you've already set up in Apple HomeKit. So these are all of my scenes here. So I can do like, record video scene. And I can even put that somewhere maybe over here, kind of off of the main um, area. I can change the icon here. Oh yeah, perfect. So when I want to record video, boom, I can just tap that. And it'll change my lights to my record setting like it is now. Very cool. Lastly, we have the option for a workflow. Now workflow is a, uh, that's a feature specific to the controller for HomeKit app. Basically allows you to run a routine with different events kind of in order. So you can kind of have it go through and do different things, basically like a routine. Um, I don't really use this a lot, um, but you can add these here as well. So really nice if you want to get into that. Uh, now you may see these other options here at the bottom. Uh, first up, this right here, we can change the size of our icons. So um, large, they're really not that big to begin with. So I kind of like extra large, um, especially if you're not adding a bunch of them here, I'm gonna go with extra large. Uh, and then underneath, you can see these different icons. So uh, the first one is all of your elements. The second one right here is just your rooms, okay? Then we have accessories only, scenes only, and then workflows only. And then again, this one right here is all your elements. All right, so let's kind of look at, oh, let's just hit done and kind of see what it looks like. Okay, so now this is just very simple just for demonstration, but you can see here, um, I can interact with this. I can tap my light on and off. I can, I can hear that closet actually over there clicking. So I'm sitting right here. Uh, on my floor plan, this is so cool. And then I can hear that clicking on and off. If I tap on my uh, light back there, you can see it just turned off, uh, tap it on, it's back on again, and it shows up right here um, immediately. So really cool. Um, if you tap these room icons, like we created one for the room, this will show you everything that's available in that room, including scenes, accessories, uh, even your automations. I have a lot of accessories and automations in this room, uh, but that's pretty cool if you're creating kind of like a larger, you know, floor plan, kind of like this one that I did here uh, that I'm still kind of working on. But you can see I've got a room icon, so I can go to this uh, and you can tap and see, like I can tap on this and see everything that's going on in my kitchen at a real quick glance. Same thing here is my wife's office. So we got just a few accessories over there, but if I want to control just the accessories, I can tap on this little tab right here and you know quickly turn the lights on and off. <laughs> She's probably wondering why lights are turning on and off uh, throughout the house right now. But uh, this is really cool. Um, so that's kind of how this works. Now a little bonus tip, if you are building out your floor plan, look into service groups because you can actually add these to your floor plans as well. Service groups allow you to group multiple lights and control them simultaneously, but you can also group contact sensors or motion detectors and display them as a single icon on the floor plan. So that's pretty cool, you know, think of adding maybe multiple motion sensors and uh, just display it in a room, and then you'll know if there's ever motion in that room from multiple sensors, for example. On the sidebar, if you scroll all the way down, you'll see service groups here. So I'll tap on that and you can see there's some that are kind of automatically generated. 
Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one and we're gonna do just kind of like maybe our three main doors. So I'm gonna call this uh, doors. This is our doors service group. We'll tap add new and we'll find the rooms we need. So I'm gonna go with back porch. We'll do our back door. And done. Okay, so now our service group is created. You can see that right here, the doors. Now if I go back up here and we'll go back to our floor plan, I can add a service group by hitting edit, tap element, we'll go to accessory. And uh, now you'll look for any of the rooms with one of the accessories from your service group. So I know there was uh, one from the front porch. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see your service groups right there. So I'll tap that and then you can add your service group anywhere. So I may add this maybe up here just to kind of give me an idea of any doors that may be open. And now uh, this is showing up as a single sensor, you know, like I said, but it's kind of cool to get a quick glance at uh, maybe multiple sensors in that room or throughout your house. So uh, in, in this case, this is kind of multiple doors throughout my house. I can see they're all closed right now, but if one was open, it would give me an indication right there um, that it is open. This is actually this door right here, uh, this one right here, and then this one over here uh, all combined. But I can tap that and I can quickly see you know, all those doors right now, they are all closed right now. But if one is opened, it will update and show me that uh, kind of right away there. So this is cool because it is a quick way to see the state of multiple sensors. If any of those three doors is opened, it will show here. A quick tap will give us the exact details of the sensors in that service group. That is the floor plan feature in a nutshell. Now let's take a look at the new, you know, home design here. On the iPhone, along the top, you'll see your floor plans, as well as all of your cameras. You can quickly swipe through and tap on one to make it full screen. Underneath, you have your rooms. Quickly access all accessories, scenes, and automations for each room. Under that will be your favorite workflows, if you have any. Then we have quick access to cameras, accessory scenes, workflows, and automations. I think this new layout and the floor plan feature is really nice on an iPad. Great for something like a wall mounted iPad. You can show and hide the side column. This is great for scrolling through cameras or you can just tap on the camera tab to see them all real quickly. I like having the floor plan view for the main area of the house, you know, just showing up all the accessories and stuff. I can quickly see all the status of my accessories as well as the sensors. And then I really like having the cameras there on the sidebar, just for you know a quick glance at the latest snapshots. You can kind of thumb through them if you want. So this is just really cool. And having those icons on your actual floor plan of the house is just a cool way you know to interact and control your smart home. Now I mentioned it earlier briefly, but just to reiterate, all the data is processed locally on your device and no camera images leave your home at all. So your 3D models are encrypted and synchronized with your other Apple devices via iCloud. So again, that's all encrypted there. The company states that as a company, they have no access to your created you know, 3D models. The app is a bit more on the expensive side. You can get the annual subscription for $29.99 a year, or you can get the lifetime license for a one-time payment of $99.99 US. Personally, I do like the lifetime option, but if you'd rather pay per year, the developers have given me a special offer just for my subscribers. So you can get $10 off your first year. I'll put a link to that below uh, in case you wanna take advantage of that offer. Also, I believe there is a seven day free trial that gives you access to all of the great features, including this new floor plan feature. So, you know, you can try it out before deciding to purchase if you want. And if you want further tutorials on how to use all the various features of the controller for HomeKit app, check out the controller for HomeKit course that uh, is in the Home Devices app. It covers many of the features and they'll soon update the course to include some of the tips and best practices for the floor plan features. Like I said in the beginning, this app is hands down the most capable HomeKit app that I've used. With so many features, it's it really is a must have for serious Apple Home users. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this floor plan feature. Is it something 
that you might be able to use. Again, there are a ton of other great features in the controller for HomeKit app. Check out this video right over here where we discuss the custom notifications feature in that app. And over here is another video showing you other great HomeKit apps that you might wanna check out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.